Monday afternoon, Ask Leaves. I know the video's late, but it's still Ask Leaves. Yeah, it's raining and people are having lunch and I'm answering emails. It's a Fleetwood Mac song. Look it up. Now I answer emails from you. Gonna give some advice or two and I'm gonna do it in 20 minutes too. ba ba bam 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 Hey everybody, it's Ask Leaves. I'm Lieberman. Let's jump into these emails. It is Monday. Uh, we got three emails from ladies today. The first email, uh, is from a Libra friend. She does not say whether or not I can use her name. Uh, she is 16 years old. And she says that she's had chronic depression for five years now and have self-harmed for three of those years. I'm on medication for my depression and go to the therapist regularly. My therapist tells me that I should just love myself and accept that I'm a beautiful girl, but however much I try, I'm really unable to do it. I don't want to admit to anyone that I'm not still not feeling okay. Also, I've been openly bisexual for two years now and people at school still think it's okay to make fun of that. I mean, uh, I've totally gotten... S Oh, I mean, I'm not that bothered by it, as uh, many people my age are usually immature about those things, but what baffles me is that it's girls. I feel like that is another per another reason for me feeling like shit. I mean, I've totally gotten so much better since I started therapy five months ago, but I'm just scared to fall in that pit again. Uh, you want some tips to stay active and keep horrible thoughts away. Well, here's the thing, uh, Lieber friend. You're never going to be able to completely uh, prevent negative thoughts about yourself that's it's just it's part of life the difference is learning learning to accept that those moments will come and then also being able to say i know that this is i know that i'm thinking this because of this not because it is true I know that it has been triggered by this behavior or by these people, but that does not mean that this is a fact about me. This is something that people think about me sometimes. That's my keys. This is a fact, this is something that people say about me or that I felt, but I know that this is not the truth. Uh, I don't know if your therapist has let you in on this, um, but uh, first of all, one thing that everyone should know when they say that they're depressed or that their doctor is telling them that they're depressed is that major clinical depression does cannot, like according to the DSM-5, like the actual thing that diagnoses come from, it cannot and does not last longer than two years. It doesn't. Um, there is, however, something called dysthymic disorder, which is sometimes referred to as chronic depression, and uh, maybe you wanna talk to your therapist and make sure that the diagnosis is correct, but it's a mild form of depression. It's what I have. It's uh, something that's humming in the background and it can it can hum in the background from the moment that you're bored, born throughout your entire life. It could, it could happen for a couple of years, doesn't matter. But it's also often misdiagnosed as ADD or ADHD because having a low level of depression all the time can make you restless or make you not be able to concentrate or whatever. Um, Let me tell you this, Lieber friend. This will be the most, this, th what you're living through right now, you will never be as insecure or scared about who you are than you will be right now. Your life from here on out, in terms of like security and being able to handle people saying shit to you and your own personal anxiety about whether or not you belong, believe me, you will become so much better at it as time goes on, because you won't have to deal with fucking teenagers. Uh, you say that you're baffled that most of the people who are immature about the fact that you're bi are girls. That does not baffle me one bit. They are insecure because they're either A, uh, not entirely sure or secure in their own sexuality, and or B, they're making fun of you to make it feel a little less uncomfortable that you might be attracted to them because they don't know how to handle it. Fuck, that's not your fault. People are immature and teenagers are the most immature. Thankfully, you're 16, which means that you've only got a couple of years left. You're already about halfway through, which is whoo, fucking fantastic. I know, right? It's fucking fantastic that you've already gotten some of the years under your belt. Um, but I, I understand, it's fucking hard. It's fucking hard and it sucks.
It sucks to be in high school. It's the worst time, other than middle school, of your entire life. Uh, your life becomes so much better, even though it can be more stressful as an adult because you have more responsibility, it's better because you have control over your life. If you don't want to talk to those people who are being shitty to you, you never have to see them again. You could move to another state. You could move to another country. You could do whatever you want. Get another job. Fuck. Quit your job and just go live on the street. Don't do that. But I'm just saying you have the option. You have the power to be able to control the direction of your life. Just know when you get those fucking glum feelings and you start thinking about all the things you don't like about yourself, and this is me speaking from experience, um, you can't dwell in it. You have to accept that they are just that, thoughts. That they are not the truth. That you, they do not govern your life. You are not a collection of labels or stories or anecdotes or anything. You are a person and you are charting a course that only you can set. No one else is gonna set it for you. Not the people who are making fun of you, not the people who are ignoring you, not the people who aren't talking to you. None of those people. You are in complete control of your destiny. All these people want to derail you because they are insecure about the fact that you know who you are. That's really scary to a teenager. It's really scary to a young adult. It's scary to some actual adults because some people never figure that out. Some people are, live in denial their whole lives. I don't know what I can tell you about self-harm because I don't have a ton of experience with it. It's, a, it's a, as a concept, to me, as a depressed teenager, it never made sense. Um, I never really felt a pull towards it because it just sounded painful and I was already in pain. I understand it now in the sense that it maybe it feels like one thing that you can control. That makes sense to me, but know that it's not going to help. I, I can't judge anyone for how they choose to cope with their life. I do worry about you, um, and I hope that the self-harming has stopped. I'm glad to hear that you're in therapy. Just hang in there. Hang in there and try to build some things for yourself in your life. They don't have to involve other people. I feel like we all get stuck in this rut of if I don't have a community, if I don't have friends, if I don't have approval of other people, I can't find happiness. That's bullshit. It's, it's an excuse to not try. I know that as somebody who used that very excuse. Fucking go make art or read books or whatever makes you happy. Just go and do it and, and, and fucking if other people aren't there with you, if they aren't participating, you don't need them. There will be people who will march to the beat of your drum. You might not meet them for a few years, but believe me, you will meet them and you will form some very powerful and lasting friendships and relationships. Trust me. Just hang in there and know that those things that you hate about yourself... A, they aren't the end of the world. B, many of them aren't true and are just things that have been thrust upon you by other people. And C, they are just thoughts. You alone are you. And you can govern your own mind. You can dictate. You can dictate what messages you choose to... in What messages you choose to... What's the word I'm looking for? Not accept. Not inherit. What message, you can choose what messages you choose to let in here and be your truth. And you can choose which ones to accept our thoughts that will go away. Don't let a cloud of thoughts surround you. No, these are the ones that I deem true. These are the ones that are just thoughts. Hello thoughts, I know that you're there. You are not my life. That's it, and I, I, I hope that that helps you. All right, <clears throat> next email. Do you guys mind if I go shut that door? You don't mind, hold on.
Someday we will edit these videos When they're edited moments like this won't happen But it won't happen anytime soon All right, this email, I love this subject line Whoa, advice and, whoa, advice and shit Although, Libra friend, uh, you spelled whoa wrong It's You spelled the W-O-A-H It's W-H-O-A a lot of people do that. Don't do that. You're smarter than that. Don't do that. <clears throat> hey Matt, just wanted to start by saying that I love you and all you do. That fat shaming video a while back meant a lot to me. Anyway, uh, my name is Libra Friend. Uh, I'm 18 and I live in the lovely state of Washington. Uh, I've had issues with the way I view myself for as long as I remember. I mean, I can recall being in the fifth grade and just knowing that boys didn't like me because I wasn't thin like all of my friends. Well, old habits die hard. I've had an eating disorder since I was 13 years old, but have recently gone into recovery, and I'm eating more than a meal a day, which is fucking, sorry about the language, huge for me. Now, I hate to bring any of this into relationship issues because people are so much more than their romantic ties, but I've been fairly lonely in that department. I've just always been a friend to the men I have interest in, or completely ignored, and those who have ever shown interest in me have treated me like absolute shit. I know I shouldn't even be thinking about this sort of th being, f I know I shouldn't even be thinking this sort of thing, but God, I'm fucking sick of feeling worthless. Sometimes I'm proud of how far I've come, but other times I can't help but wonder why in all these years, not one friend that I haven't chosen to share my disorder with asked me why I never ate. How do I realize that I'm more than my disorders? How do I establish good relationships with people that I'm interested in? How do you get your hair so nice? Asking the real questions here. Uh, sorry, trying to lighten the mood. Thank you so much. You're an inspiration. Um, <clears throat> well, Libra friend, first of all, you're not worthless. Um, and I congratulate you on fighting your eating disorder. That is easily one of the hardest things to come back from in the world. Um, a lot of people, I think, don't understand just how difficult it is to untangle yourself from where you have to be psychologically to not eat or to be bulimic it's a big deal and people people who people always fear and malign things that they don't understand and uh, i think a lot of people don't understand eating disorders one thing i'll tell you and this is this is a piece of advice that someone gave me not even a week ago that i need to keep reminding myself of which is that um most people ne never spend any energy thinking about most people. Namely, you ask, uh, why is it that so many people who haven't, you d who don't know about your eating disorder never asked why you never ate? It's because most people don't think about other people. They're too busy thinking about themselves. It's not even necessarily a bad thing. It's, it, it also applies to when you think that like people have formed an opinion of you or they're talking about you behind your back. 98% of the time, most people aren't talking about you behind your back because they don't give a shit about anyone that they don't know or that they don't talk to on a regular basis. They just think about themselves and what's either right or wrong with their life. I don't even judge people for that. That's just, that is our prerogative as people. We can all calm the fuck down about the obvious conspiracy that's going on around the school or around the workplace or among my friends and what they're doing behind my back and how they feel about me because they obviously hate me. They just haven't been able to tell me because, you know, they're, they don't want to get in that discussion, but they obviously, no, they are not thinking about you at all. Now that might seem depressing, but it's also kind of liberating in that uh, no one's establishing any opinions of you. The only thing that matters is how you feel about you and how you choose to treat yourself. And it sounds like you are trying to treat yourself better, which is great. You're asking me hard questions. You realize that, right? How do I realize that I'm more than my disorders? I think you, in writing this email, it seems very evident that you know that you're more than your disorders. Look, everyone deals with intense emotional discomfort in their lives, especially when you're young, because you're still trying to figure out who you are. I know that you're more than your disorders. I think your friends know that you're more than your disorders. 
Your disorders are how you've been coping with life. They're, they've been a defense mechanism, a survival technique, a flawed one, but still a survival technique so far. You've just been trying to survive. Here's the thing. You are not governed by what you've done in the past. No one is. The past is just that. Past. It's over. You have the ability to chart any course you wish. If you don't want to think of yourself as a bunch of disorders and you're not ready to think of yourself as a whole person, how about this? Consider yourself a just a bowl of potential. You are just a ball of potential energy. Do you know, is everyone watching this taking physics? Um, you have a ball up in the air, 100 feet in the air, and that ball, just by being up there, uh, because of gravity, that ball is potential energy. Because the moment that ball is released, gravity will pull it down and that potential energy will become kinetic energy and then will hit the ground with fucking force because it was 100 feet up. So while you're up there right now in your life, because you are 18 years old and you have fucking at least 60 years worth of life left, you are nothing but, pot but potential energy. Don't think that you've burned yourself out just by trying to survive high school. A lot of people feel that way because it, it just feels endless until you're out of it. But you are just potential energy. And you're, you're, you are just about ready to be set free and fucking start plummeting with incredible speed towards a life that you deserve. So, accept that you are potential energy that can be released in any way that you wish. How freeing and cool is that? You can unleash it in any direction that you wish. Imagine that gravity pulls in every direction and you get to choose which way you wanna go. Or even better, let's actually make it scientifically make sense. If you are a ball of potential energy and you're in space, you're not moving, but once you push in any direction, you will only continue to accelerate till the end of time because there's no friction. It, it, it just, you would just go. You can choose the direction. So you are not your disorders. You are a person poised to go anywhere she wants with her life. Anywhere. That's really fucking cool. And I hope you take advantage of that. <sighs> How do I establish good relationships with people that I'm interested in? I don't know. I still am figuring that out for myself. Uh, how do you establish good relationships? Be honest. Never do anything that you don't want to do. Communicate. Uh, if someone treats you like shit, you make it clear that that's how you feel. And if they're not willing to change that behavior, you get the fuck out. Um, try... If you sense going in that there is a personality clash that will be a problem in the long term, maybe you don't date that person, no matter how attracted you are to them. Um, oftentimes, I recognize <laughs> that the person that I'm attracted to would be a nightmare to date, and then I date them anyway. Because I can't help it, because of hormones and, 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 and fluids. That's, that's life, how, how, how life happens. Um, yeah, you just gotta, step one, value yourself. Value yourself and the people who don't value you tend to fall away because you won't let them near you. Value yourself and everything else will start to fall into place. It might take a while, you might have to date a lot of rotten apples. I'm sorry, there are a lot of people out there. Not all of them are nice. But just keep an open mind, value yourself, and you'll learn the rest of it as you go. I promise. Okay. Oh, and how do I get my hair so nice? Judaism! <laughs> I'm a nerd. Okay. Last question. Mm. This email's from Haley. If you guys have been on the Libra Friends streams, uh, you have met or heard about Haley. Um, she is uh, a absolutely darling girl, and uh, she's one of my favorites. And um, 
she has a uh, Hirschsprung's disease. She recently found out. She's been um, constantly in pain. I'll I'll I'll, I'll read her email. Um, I just learned today that I will be getting my first colon surgery uh, for my disease on March sixth or Friday of this week. Now I've been through other surgeries and I know how the process works, but this surgery is different. I can be in pain for weeks after and even bleed weeks after the surgery takes place. When it was learned that I needed this surgery done, the surgeon even asked me if I for sure wanted to get it done because it's so painful. I've been in pain for years with this disease and if this is a process that could possibly help me, of course I'm going to do it. But nobody knows that I'm deathly afraid. I'm afraid that it might not work. I'm afraid I'll be in extreme pain. I am just deathly afraid. I have been putting up a very strong and happy face around my family, but the truth is, the truth of the matter is, I am afraid and sometimes I just want to break down and cry. The worst part is these surgeries could not work as well. There's a 50-50 chance with them. And most days I can put a smile on my face and get through it with a positive attitude, but others are much harder. I'm having strong anxiety this week and I just need your help, your advice on how to fight through this, on how to keep a positive outlook through this Friday, because you are always able to fight through anything. Thank you for being here and being like my best friend. Uh, the Lieber friends are like my family. I will be watching lots of vlogs from the hospital. Thank you and much love. <sighs> Haley. First thing, and you know this, um, what you've been going through, your disease, that you've had to deal with it is not fair. It's really not. No one deserves to be sick, especially you. You're a very special person. I think that despite your fear, you wouldn't have agreed to this surgery if you didn't know that it was your best option at having the kind of life that you deserve. You're taking a risk, but you're taking a risk for the opportunity at a very powerful and healthy life. I'm so proud of you for taking it. There are people who are so used to being in pain, whether it's physical or emotional, that they never are willing to take that risk, that scary step towards the life that they actually want. I know that this is a scary time for you. Know that we're all here for you. Um, there are so many Libra friends who know you and love you. Everyone who has met you feels the same way. You're a very special person. We're all gonna be thinking about you and giving you, sending you good vibes this Friday. Try not to think about what the worst that will happen is. You've got a doctor, and you've got parents, and you've got Libra friends to worry about that. All I want you to do going into this is remember why you made the decision to get this surgery. Because you now have a name for your disease. You have a way to fight it. And you have a chance at the life that you deserve. This surgery, though scary, and the recovery, though scary, are the first steps towards the best version of your life. I am so proud of you. I am just pulling for you. I'm kvelling, that's a, it's a Yiddish word. I'm just brimming with positivity and hope because this surgery means that you're on your way to something very wonderful. We'll all be thinking about you. Um, try not to put on, you don't need to put on a brave face for anyone else. I just want you to try to approach this with a sense of hope. Know that it is a leap of faith, but one that has pretty good odds. And I can't wait to hear how you're doing on the other side and know that the recovery may be painful, but you have people to lean on. Okay. Folks, that's going to be today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. There will be a Libra friend hangout this Thursday. Um, and uh, I love you all. Have a wonderful Monday. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.